Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of Silhouette Paint Masterclass. In today's episode, we are going to check out output node inside Silhouette and as the name suggests, it helps us to render out all the paintwork into any other compositing applications which we usually use. I always use Nuke as my compositing application. Definitely we can import images which we rendered from Silhouette into Nuke. So let's jump into the tutorial. Here this is my plate and I already did some paint work. So let's show you what the result looks like. Here I have painted this van from this building. Now I have to export my paint work from Silhouette into Nuke. So how to do that? It's pretty simple. In Silhouette, inside nodes, in the Silhouette tab, we have a couple of nodes here for rendering out. The first one of that is output node and the other one is output multipart. When we are creating a new session, there is always an output node created along with the roto and paint nodes. If you click on the output node, properties opens up. At first, we have an option to choose the file format. We have lots of options here, but I believe the mostly used option by everyone will be OpenEXR. Up next, we have compression option, which helps us to compress the file size. Usually, I keep this as zip, which is the default option. Some people tend to use DWAA and DWAB because it is light in size. Uh, let's keep this as zip as of now. We have an option for automatic data window. Let me explain what is this. If you did some paintwork in this footage and uh, there is an alpha for that, you can use that alpha to crop the paintwork while rendering. This just acts like auto crop inside Nuke. So if you prefer to render that way, you can turn this option on. Next, we have an option where we can choose the right folder structure and also type in the right file name. Click on this icon here. This is the folder where I'm going to render my output. Here, I can type in name of the file. In my case, it's render. Mostly, you have to follow the pipeline structure in your company or in your workflow. After that, dot four hash for the frame padding. And also, I like to type in the file extension as well. After that, just click on save button. As soon as you do that, you can see the folder structure here and the file name. You can see the entire thing written over here inside the sample window, including the file extension as well. Here we have an option for typing in metadata. This is most sort of a pipeline stuff. Up next, we have the option for choosing the channels. For example, you are rendering paintwork, you can choose RGB along with alpha or just RGB as well. I always prefer to render RGB and alpha after my paintwork. In other case, if you are doing some roto inside silhouette and want to export mats, you can just turn off RGB and just export alpha as well. And also there is an option for choosing depth as the channels for your render. Next, we have option for choosing the render views. That means left or right. This is mostly applied for studio workflow. For me, I'm just keeping both. We have an option for pre-multiply. If you have an RGB channel along with alpha in your paint workflow, you can pre-multiply as RGBA inside Silhouette as well. You don't need to do that separately in any other applications. Simply do that if you wish. Already explained what this sample window is. Just a description of the entire folder structure and the file name and file extension as well. Finally, if you are done with all these settings, you can click on render option. Before that, there is an option for resetting all this. Click on render. In this pop-up, there are a few settings which will help you to customize the range and size of the render which you are going to do. First, we have an option where we can choose which output node has to be rendered. That means if I'm keeping all output nodes, all the output nodes in this specific session will be rendered. But if I'm keeping selected output nodes, you can select individual output node and that will be rendered. By default, it is selected output nodes. Here we have work range. That means if you want to specifically render the range which you're working, you can choose work range. Also, there is an option for rendering all the frames and current frame, custom frame as well, where you can type in the specific frames which you worked. I'm keeping this as work range. This option will be automatically filled according to the range of work which you choose here. For me, I choose uh, work range and my work range starts from frame 1 to frame 100. Frame 1 is automatically typed in over here. Next, we have an option for field handling. This is mostly used when you're working on NTSC or PAL footages. I'm keeping this as none because I'm not working in that way. If you keep this as interlace, you have an option to choose which type of field dominance you need for interlacing. I'm keeping this as none. So that's why this option is disabled here. Next, we have an option for choosing the right resolution for your render. By default, it's one is to one. That means the original resolution. But if you want to render a proxy version of your paintwork, you can choose any of this option. Two is to one, three is to one, four is to one. This will scale down your render and decrease your render time, which in in most cases will help you to check if you are on the right path or not. I'm keeping this as one is to one. Finally, we have an option to select what's the data window which we are going to use for rendering this output. 
there is session ROI and DOD. Session is the session settings, that's the original footage resolution. ROI is region of interest and DOD is the domain of definition if I am right. And there are specific tutorials in my channel for rendering ROI and DOD. Please refer to that. Mostly this will be used if you have overscan in your footage or if you're making a large clean plate larger than the original resolution. In my case, it's session here. And you can click on preview and validate as this helps to preview your work while it's being rendered once you are okay with all the settings you can simply click on cancel if you wish to cancel this render also there is an option to save these specific settings you can simply click on apply button or if you are okay with all the settings you can simply click on render that's it rendering is going on and all our works are getting exported as exr files let's cancel this now and i just want to show you one more thing cool so in my paint node if you see here we have an option where we can connect output node as output image and there is also an option called paint only this is my favorite option for rendering uh, i'm going to connect my output pipe into the paint only option in the paint node keeping all the settings as before here instead of clicking on render button i'm using the shortcut that is control r everything looks okay to me click on render now if you see our render is so fast and only the area where our paintwork is getting rendered this is pretty handy if you want to improve your render efficiency definitely this will speed up your workflow finally there is one more node inside silhouette which we can make use for rendering just go into nodes and there is output multi-part you can simply type in tab in the trees window here uh, type in output so choose that What's the difference between output and output multipart? If you want to render one specific input, you can use output node, which mostly every one of us will be using. But in some extreme cases where you have to render multiple inputs at a single time, you can use output multipart for that specific purpose. Let's suppose I have to render checkerboard, one more color bars. Let's take paint node. I'm going to connect that into color bars checkerboard as well so here i have three input source and three paint node that means i did work on three different plates and i have to render all my work at a single time in such situations you can use output multi-part you can connect input one to paint node input two to checkerboard and the next pipe into the color bars let's suppose if you're rendering from here and taking that into nuke if you go inside the layer you have access for all your paint works on all the different plates which you worked in silhouette inside the same render, which is pretty awesome you don't have to render multiple outputs in multiple folders with different file names and all you can do that once with a single node output multi-part i have made a detailed tutorial about output multi-part few years back it's an old tutorial but definitely very informative if you're not able to find that please comment it down i will reply you with the link yep so this is all about rendering from silhouette and like always if you feel like this tutorial is informative please hit that like button and share this with your colleagues who already learned how to paint inside silhouette and looking for ways to render that out till the next tutorial it's my new signing off thank you for watching